Hey everyone, so previously we finished off with the main feature overview for the map visual. In this video, we're going to be going through the initial setup and I'm going to explain all the fields for the visual. But first things first, let me take you through the sample report that you are going to be using throughout the course. As I mentioned, you can download the report from the description below. So if you look at the report itself, you can see that in every single page, you're going to have these two tabs, the training view and the map visual view. Essentially, what is the difference between them is that training view is a blank version of it. So you have only the text, but you don't have the visual. This is because that view we're going to be using to actually create the charts ourselves. Whereas the map visual view is going to have already a pre-configured variation of the chart or multiple charts in some cases. So you can just play around with them and see how the settings have been applied to them. So without further ado, let's go into the training view and actually create our first instance of the drill down map visual. So let's go here, click on the map visual itself. We're just going to resize it a bit and also disable the background and the title since I'm not going to be using those. Going into the fields, the first thing you need to know is that there are two mandatory fields and the rest of the fields are completely optional. So if just using those two are going to be enough, you don't have to worry about anything else. And those two are going to be latitude and longitude. So for example, if I add in latitude and longitude right here, you can see that this is enough information for the visual to be displayed. So it finds those coordinates and it creates a node there. In our case, what we also do by default is we start to cluster the nodes to save the space for the visual a little bit. Now, going forward, like I mentioned, you have your additional fields. The first additional field that you have here is going to be name. Name allows you to provide a textual column, and that name is going to be used in few places. One of them is going to be the node label by default, and the other option is that it's going to be displayed in the tooltip, so you know what node have you actually selected with a right click. Now, going forward, you have the value. So the value is any numerical or DAX measure calculation value that you want to use there. And when you use it, there are two things that it derives. First is the actual value that you are going to be displaying on the node itself. The other thing is that also based on these values, you're going to be automatically sizing the nodes. So the nodes with the higher value are going to be bigger than the smaller nodes. So next one is going to be radius in pixels. And the difference here between the value and the radius is that in certain situations, you want to have the value not drive the actual sizing, but you have a different metric driving the sizing. A quick example of this could be, let's say, for example, in sales. When you have sales value or sales amount for the deal as your value, whereas, let's say, the number of communications could be the radius. So based on how many times have you actually contacted the person, the node gets starting to get bigger. So going forward, next one is going to be colors. And before we move forward, I just wanted to quickly cover one thing. There are certain settings that are only going to be applicable when you are using singular nodes. So if you're using cluster nodes, these settings are not going to be applicable for your case. And those fields are going to be color, image, shape, aura, and label. The reason for this is because these essentially derive specific configurations for the singular node. When you're using a cluster node, there really isn't an easy way to define, for example, which image should be used from the tens of nodes that you have underneath it. But going through the fields itself, we're going to cover every single one of them. Now, color. Within color, you can provide values in multiple ways. One of them is by providing a hex code, and the other one is, for example, to provide a name for the color itself. What this allows you to do is to dynamically color the nodes without the need of going through the formatting options and applying these settings for each individual node. Now, next one is going to be image. For the image, we actually support two ways of providing it. One of them is through a direct URL. The other one is if you use base 64 encoding and you provide that value to a column. Going forward, we have our shapes. Now, similar approach to colors and images, you have to provide a specific shape and that is going to be used for the representation of the node. Now, one place where you can find all the shapes that are available is actually in the formatting options. Open up node settings, scroll down a bit more and find a setting called shape. If you click on it, you can see we have a drop down which showcases all the possible options that the visual currently supports. Now, going back to the fields list, the next one is going to be category. 
And for the category, there are actually two use cases. One of them is when you want to create, for example, for singular nodes, just a way to categorize them. And once you apply these categories, these nodes are also going to be automatically colored in different sets of colors. Now, the other option is when you use category for clustered nodes, you can use this to initialize and create donuts on top of a node. This allows you to see the actual categorical coverage of that particular region. Next one is going to be Aura. And this is, again, one of those settings that's applicable only to single nodes. What the Aura allows you to do is essentially to create an area around it. You can define the Aura through the settings, and you can further customize them through the formatting options. We're going to be covering a lot of these settings afterwards in the different courses. Now, a few more last things that we need to cover are going to be, for example, label. Now, there are two things that are quite similar, right? Name and label. The difference here is that, for example, name can be used to identify a node. So those could actually be really long strings of text, whereas the label is something that allows you to override the name. So you can have a shortened version of the same name just so it fits a little bit more nicely into the report instead of having you know, hundreds of different characters. Now, the last thing is going to be tooltip fields. Tooltip allows you to have multiple columns or measures within it. And what it does is it displays that information within the tooltip. And you can open up the tooltip by right clicking on a node. All right, that's going to be it for the initial setup and all the explanations for the fields. And I'll see you in the next video.